Okay, in this section we're going to cover um, removing the jet unit from the ski that you're going to be using and then uh, installing the thrust adapter. This particular model of ski happens to be the uh, uh, Sea-Doo RXT 260. Um, so it's a little more complex than, than your Yamaha and your Kawasaki. But we're also going to be covering an a older Sea-Doo RXP 255, which is more similar to those models. So you'll have an idea uh, on how to do it on, on both, both styles. Okay, as I mentioned, this is the 260, uh, RXT 260 Sea-Doo. So um, basically the, the, the main components you're going to be removing is the reverse bucket. Um, a little further in is the steering nozzle and then the actual nozzle that's connected to the jet unit. Um, I actually have everything put together uh, kind of finger tight on here so we'll just uh, go over how to remove everything, what you have to remove and all that stuff. So. Right. So first things first, you gotta get the the reverse bucket off, which consists of about four bolts. Okay, as I mentioned, that was the first part, so that was the reverse bucket. The only, the only part you'll have to take off of that is this little arm here, which is one bolt and a nut. This little arm here, which is a bolt and a nut. And then the two retainers in this area, which connect to this part of the bracket on the, the, the steering nozzle assembly. Um, so we're just going to continue on. Like I said, everything here is finger tight, so I can just remove it by hand. Um, next, you're going to be removing the steering nozzle, so you'll have to uh, undo the steering linkage. And for now, we're just gonna set that aside. But we will be taking this um, this rod end bearing off later and using that a little further down the line. Um, the steering the steering nozzle is actually connected by this bracket on the inside of the jet unit or the the tunnel rather. And then this bracket over here, which is connected to the the IBR or the intelligent braking system uh, actuator. So. So we're going to remove this one. Then we're going to go to this side. And remove this one. And be sure that when you remove these, you actually put them back in the uh, in the holes on the brackets, especially on this side over here, because if you don't do that, um, this this bracket that's connected to the the tunnel actually doesn't sandwich back together, and that could cause this to uh, take on water, and you wouldn't notice until it's kind of too late. So, all right, okay, get that out of there. So that's that. You have to push that up and back to get these little rollers to come out of the bracket and then just pull it out like so. And like I said, put the bolts back in their holes and then you're going to want to go ahead and tighten those down so that it sandwiches that bracket again. And then the, uh, the final piece to remove is this nozzle connected to the, the jet unit. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off real fast. And then after we get all this stuff off, I can show you how to install the, the thrust adapter. Um, when, you're, when you're removing this here, remember to set these bolts aside because um, with, the, with the thrust adapter, we're actually going to use these factory bolts to put it back on. So don't lose those, don't damage them. Um, be sure to take some care with these also because they are stainless steel, which is a little soft sometimes. And over over tightening them or or forcing them back, if if you're having any issue with them, can cause the head to break off, and you'll have a big issue if that happens.
Okay, so all, all the components you see here are what we had to take off. This is the, the main nozzle, which is connected directly to the jet pump. Right here is the steering nozzle um, and, the, and the bracket that goes along with it. And then here is the reverse bucket. So it would have come off in this order, reverse bucket first, steering nozzle, and then this nozzle. And if you look up here, you can see the exposed jet unit. <coughs> So this is what it's going to look like before you hook up the thrust adapter. And as I mentioned before, be sure to, to put these bolts back in their holes, especially on this side, because if you don't, this, this bracket here, it, it doesn't get put back together. And, and you can take on water right here pretty, pretty considerably, and, and, and you could conceivably sink your ski. Also, another thing you're going to do is take this, this rod end bearing off because we have an extension that goes in between here so that you still have steering on your jet evader. So you just take that off and it exposes the, the steering cable. All right, now that we've got all the, uh, all the pieces off of the jet unit that we need to take off, we're gonna go ahead and install the thrust adapter. So generally this will take two people. Um, you want somebody up front to support it as it's going underneath the trailer. And it's also important to have installed your bunk risers at this point. Um, if, if your trailer does not provide the uh, proper clearance. So we're going to go ahead and, and put the thrust adapter in. And as I mentioned before, the bolts you use to put these on are, are just the, uh, the supplied bolts that came off when you took the, the nozzle out. But the other thing you're going to need, and since this is a SeaDoo, we're going to use this black insert ring. So I usually put it in at this point so it, it doesn't have a, a tendency to fall out, but you just take it and slide it into the recess in the thrust adapter. So now that we have that on, we're good to bring it up and put it on, on the actual jet pump itself. So. Okay. Right. Um, now that we have it actually sitting up on the jet unit itself, um, the person up front is going to put the strap through the, the, the eye, and we'll go ahead and show that in a moment as well. But you don't want to tighten the strap all the way up at this point. You want to just kind of put some tension on it and get it hanging, you know, loosely. So it'll allow you to put your bolts in a lot easier. And always, always finger tight to start with so that you're not stripping them out. As I mentioned before, these are, are stainless steel bolts. so. If you're, uh, if you're putting them on, just be sure not to over torque them because it is pretty easy to snap the heads off of these things. And since this is a newer RXT, it actually has a four bolt pattern, but some of the, uh, some of the earlier RXT 260s actually have a, a three bolt pattern, which we've taken that into account. And there's actually that pattern in the, 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 the mounting plate of the thrust adapter. So. Alright, so there's your thrust adapter installed. Um, as you can see, just the factory bolt pattern. So one, two, three, and four bolts. Another thing that's important to mention is uh, it's, it's, it's a good idea to use like a, uh, a, a cross pattern, just, just like when you're putting the wheel on a car or something like that. So you tighten from here to there to there to there, and then do the same thing when you go around and torque it. So. We'll move on. We'll move up to the front to, to show you how the straps installed, and then come back here to do the um, steering linkage. All right, so we're up, up at the front of the ski now. Um, you'll you'll go you'll want to go ahead and grab this strap, which uh, in your crate was actually holding the two pieces of the thrust adapter together. It's an endless ratchet. It's made of stainless steel, so there won't be any corrosion issues. Um, w when you're feeding the thrust adapter through the bottom, you, like I like I mentioned before, you actually want to put this in. Um, a little loose at first so that the, the bolts can be tightened at the back of the thrust adapter. It just brings this up a little bit and it, it, it allows you to move the back around a little bit while you're putting the bolts in. So like I said, do not tighten it all the way at first. It feeds up through the toe eye here and then it just comes back down, comes back down to itself. It feeds, okay. 
Okay, once you have the, the bolts in place at the back of the thrust adapter, you can go ahead and crank it down all the way. So just tighten it up. And make sure you lock it back. Um, so, so what you see here is just your standard setup. This actually just has the, the standard cam lock on it. Um, we also have an optional stunt swivel cam lock. So if you were to get that, um, if you were to order that initially, it would be on there already. But if you ordered it later, you're going to have to actually take this one off and replace it. So you'll need a strap wrench, which you see here. Unless you can actually find the, the, um, the larger diameter wrench that, that you would need to remove this. But this is actually a stunt swivel. As you can see, it spins around there so that your hose does not get tangled up. Um, it's a pretty good option when you get a little bit more advanced. Start doing uh, aerial spins and stuff like that. So, Okay, one of the final steps we're going to take here is uh, putting your steering linkage rod in. Um, with your kit, there's actually two of these supplied. Um, there's a black one and a white one. The black one is actually for all models of sea as well as Kawasaki. The white one is, is specifically for Yamaha due to the fact that Yamaha has a different thread pitch on its steering cable. Um, if, you, if, if you can look inside here, which I'm not sure if you can see or not, the, the threads are actually recessed a quarter on this end, a quarter inch on this end to allow it to actually go over the, the the steering cable a little bit more just to add some support so um, another thing that's important to mention is that these little arms that are part of the, the actuation of the IBR should be zip tied up to keep them out of the way because it could actually hang down and imp impede your steering you know by, by jamming up the rod so like I said zip tie those up out of the way so they don't become an issue later um, so I, I've located the, the steering steering cable and you're just going to go ahead and thread this on as far as you can on that end so like I said it the, the sleeve goes over the rod and supports it okay so I got that all the way on um, as I mentioned before this little rod end bearing comes into play here so we go ahead and thread that on the end of the, the linkage rod and all your adjustment is up in here so as I mentioned, you just thread that all the way in on that end. Um, you're going to want to make sure this nozzle is straight and the handlebars are actually in line as if the ski were going straight. And that looks pretty good right there. So this should just drop into place. You know, if I was to take this, this bolt off just be able to go down into this hole like so so I'm just gonna go finger tight on that so this nozzle straight the handlebars are straight so you can go ahead and sit call that good and take these jam nuts and just go all the way up on them obviously you would go and, and tighten all this stuff up with a wrench but your steering is, is installed right there um, this is in line with the handlebars. You want to go ahead and check everything to make sure you have full, full throw on this. Um, another thing that I can show you is the adjustable or the uh, the, the replaceable nozzles on the inside of the, the steering. And when you're on the lake, you, you generally do this uh, when you're switching between riders. So a little less experienced rider, you'd use the smaller nozzle, as mentioned before. And you can change this out just by taking this off. You bring that around. This little rubber, rubber gasket needs to come out in order to get the nozzle out. And you, as you can see, this nozzle is quite a bit bigger than this one. So if I was going to put this one in for a less experienced rider, just slide it in like that. The gasket goes in afterwards, and there's a little recess in this ring that you want to tuck that down into so it doesn't get bound up when you're threading it on. So now that that's all the way in, I can go ahead and put it right back on. And as I mentioned, you can do this in the water. It's not a big, big problem. Um, just make sure you don't drop that nozzle because they do not float, obviously. 
Alright, once that's threaded up, you don't have to actually put a lot of torque on this. It stays in place pretty good because of the, the rubber gasket, but you want to, you know, put it on there as tight as you can by hand. You can do that by just spinning this back and then tightening that up. Okay, and then make sure, always make sure that it's it's parallel with the, the bottom of the ski so that your steering's not going up and down like that. And then um, that's basically the final step. Other than uh, uh, periodically checking things while you're out on the lake, make sure this rod doesn't come loose. Always check your jam nuts. Um, as I said, periodically as you're riding, come back and, and just check the, the bolts on the mounting plate here. Feel around back there on occasion and make sure you're not getting the gap. And, and also periodically check your strap to make sure it's not coming loose. You, you want to go ahead and, and grab the front of the thrust adapter and make sure that there's no play at all. So that thing should be so tied up on the bottom of the ski that you shouldn't be able to move it by hand. And that's it for the 260. Okay, now we're going to go over a, uh, a, a jet unit with a little less complexity. This is actually a, um, an 09 RXP 255. And it, uh, obviously it doesn't have the IBR like the, like the 260 does. So it doesn't have an actuator or anything like that. It's all pretty much just run on cables and, and, and everything. Um, the, the reverse assembly is obviously attached to the steering nozzle and all that. So we're going to go over how to take this off. And, and as I mentioned before, this, this jet unit, jet pump, all that stuff um, is, is quite a bit more similar to the Yamahas and the Kawasaki. So by going over this, you should be able to hook up to one of those as well. Okay, so just like on the other one, I've got everything set up kind of finger tight, so we're just going to go over real fast and I'll show you what you have to remove. Um, this one, unlike the other, uh, the, the 260, doesn't have an actuator for an IBR. It, it's all run on linkages. This, this reverse bucket just comes down with a linkage. So we're going to start out by removing the linkages, and we're going to start with the steering linkage. Um, so you're just going to pull that off, and then we're just going to set it aside for now. But this... This also comes into play later, just like on the other one, so we're going to have to put that, that linkage uh, extension in between here and the, the thrust adapter when we get to that point. Um, another point is right here. I'm actually missing my VTS uh, linkage right now, but from, from back here to this point, the VTS is connected, but rather than unhooking, unhooking it here, I usually come back here and take the nut off of this and just leave the linkage hanging on here. Um, and then on the other side over here is the, uh, the, reverse, the reverse linkage. So we would go ahead and take the nut out of there, um, set that aside. But on this one, I'll also take the, the, the rod end bearing off of here. And I generally reconnect it to the, the, the steering nozzle itself so, so that I don't lose the parts. Um, after you've got all the linkages dis disassembled, we'll start out by taking the um, the main bolts off of the steering steering nozzle from the jet pump, and just like on the other one, you actually use these bolts to to reattach the thrust adapter. So you know, keep those handy. Um, uh, just like on the other one as well, there there are four. None of the uh, None of the jet pumps on the, the 255 CDs have a variance like the other one with the, the three bolt pattern on, on some of the T's. All of these have a, a four bolt pattern, including your, your 215's. Pretty much everything's the same, except for the motor, obviously. Okay, so this is the exposed jet pump. Um, you still have your linkages here. So, as I mentioned before, this this is the steering linkage. So this is the one we're going to take the the rod end bearing off and actually use when we hook the thrust adapter up, similar to how we did it on the 260. So I'll go ahead and remove that and just set it aside for now. Um, as I mentioned, the VTS is one of the linkages you have to take off, and this is the actuator for it here. So. 
like I said, you could actually unhook it from the jet the, or the steering nozzle right down here, but I generally do it up here because I like to keep all that together. Um, another thing that to uh, make reference to is the um, the bilge, bilge line that goes into the Venturi nozzle. Um, some of them actually have a plastic in between you know, insert right here, so ours actually has that. Some of them actually have it built into the jet pump, so it's just a you know, an extended piece of metal with two bumps on it, two little holes right there. If yours does have the plastic, it's a good idea to keep it in there, um, just so that you don't take on water here, because the, the bilge is actually disabled when the jet, jet units, or when the thrust adapter is hooked to the jet unit. Uh, mine, I actually took that out, because we run this ski exclusively as a generator, and I actually silicone those holes just to, just to be certain that we don't take on any water. And then the final one is the reverse lever. And most of the time you don't use this, but we do have uh, an optional reverse bucket now. So if you actually have the optional reverse bucket, this, this cable will come into play later. And um, finally, the, the last thing that you would have had to unhook on the, the steering nozzle is is to these arms, there's actually a little bracket underneath the, this, the, um, the steering nozzle that hooks to this point and, and to a similar arm on this side to the same point. So you'd obviously have to remove those. I like to take these arms off just so they're out of the way, but you don't have to do that. Honestly, you could leave them hanging there. Um, they don't really impede anything. So, um, yeah. And then obviously, just like on the, uh, the 260, you'll have to have your, your insert ring. So on these, I usually just put it up in here before I, before I put the thrust adapter on there. But um, as I mentioned before, th this, this jet, jet pump here is similar to the ones you'll find on, on most of your models of Yamaha and Kawasaki. So you can actually watch this video in reference to when you're hooking up to those. Um, one of the main differences, especially on the, the Kawasaki, is that on here it'll actually have a, a, a little line. The, the bilge will be coming off of this side and it hooks into the, the, the Venturi nozzle just like, just like this here on the Sea-Doo. But that's a, a rubber line on the Yamaha, so you'll take that line and actually pinch it in half and put a zip tie around it so that it doesn't uh, take on water um, and sink your ski. Just be sure to uh, periodically check that as well, just like you would with with any of your other thrust adapter pieces. Um, and that's that's basically it. So now that we have all this stuff out of the way, we can go ahead and hook the thrust adapter up. Okay, um, in this section we're actually going to go over uh, the optional reverse bucket, which um, hasn't been out that long. Actually, we just developed it, um, so it's, it's going to become available here pretty soon. Now, the, the one thing to, to remember with this is that it, it'll only work on, on every model except for the, uh, the RXT, RXP 260 uh, c because of the, the IBR. Um, to this point, we only have it to where it works on a, a ski with an actual reverse linkage. So, like this model here, RXP 09 255. Um, and it's, it's it's an aftermarket part, so it'll go on your existing thrust adapter uh, without any modifications. The only difference is that, like I mentioned, we'll, we'll be using the, the reverse cable to actuate it. So we're going to go over real fast how to install it. All right, so um, the reverse bucket's actually pretty simple. Um, as I mentioned, it's an aftermarket part, so it, it'll go on your uh, existing thrust adapter with no modification to the actual thrust adapter itself. Um, there's two brackets that look like this that go on the back side. So those are going to wrap around the, the thrust adapter tube here and here. And once this goes on, it'll be up against it like this. So the reverse bucket goes over the steering nozzle. And then the, the third bracket is actually a big uh, U-bolt that goes over the, um, you know, let me get this off here. It'll actually go over the, the steering nozzle right behind the, um, the, the, the fastener for the, the steering nozzle. So it's going to go in this little gap back here. Um, like I said, bracket, bracket, U-bolt, and then everything will go on like that. We'll put the bolts in here. Two, or two on this side, two on this side, and then this thing 
and slides down in here. And there's a couple of a couple of holes right here that those slide down into. There's a, a like a lock nut on top, and then the nut that you tighten up to to actually uh, secure it down onto the thrust adapter itself. I'm going to go ahead and put it on real fast, and then we'll show you how to get the linkage rod on there. Now that we've tightened up all the fasteners on the brackets, um, it, it's, it's important to note also that, that it's a good idea to put everything on loose at first and then go around and tighten everything in sequence, just like you've seen there. Um, we can actually move on to the, uh, the actuation rod now, or the, the linkage rod for the actuator cable. So I'm going to flip this down out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. This cable here is similar to the, the extension that we put on the steering linkage. Um, it's got a different thread pitch, so you can't switch one to the other, and, and with this we actually supply the rod end bearing, so it'll actually come, you know, complete. So, you go ahead and put that on the, the, the reverse cable, just like you did with the uh, steering linkage rod. Um, this one here, you got to adjust it, so you go ahead and let this swing back. Here's the, the retaining nut is in here, the bolt and the nut, so just screw it in until it lines up with that. It's just about even. So it's going to be up there, so I'm going to take the nut off. You just leave the bolt in there. There's a couple washers, so make sure to put one on either side. And we'll pull this out. Put the rod end bearing on there. And then just button that up. And the one thing you want to make sure when you're doing this is, is that the, the forward position, that you've got a little bit of a gap in between the steering nozzle and the, the, the reverse bucket because if you, you have too much slack in the, in the linkage rod, it could hang down like that and it's just going to impede your flow. So you want to make sure it, you, know, you pull it down and it comes back up. You've got enough clearance there. So um, once everything's tightened up, you're good to go, and uh, basically the way you use this is, is just like if uh, you had your, your regular steering nozzle on your, your ski, you know, if you wanted to go in reverse, you just pull it back, it dumps in front of the, the nozzle, and then you can still steer, but it, it reverses the steering. So that's that. Um, this, is, this is a good option if you're running a rental agency and, and you're, you're going to be flying a lot of beginner um, riders. It's always easier to... Uh, to bring tension to the hose by going in reverse rather than going away from them and doing the, uh, the other procedure. But as I mentioned, this only works on 
the older sea -Dews, this actually, um, the reverse is actually actuated by a cable, um, not, the, not the 260s that have the IBR. So keep that in mind when you're ordering your parts. If you have a, a, a sea 260, this is not an option for you at, at this point, but uh, who knows, we might actually make one pretty soon, so keep, keep on the lookout for that.